Okay, well, today we're going to continue our environmental architecture unit. And I know Emma talked about like different types of buildings and like she went into detail about like examples of buildings that are really sustainable. But today we're going to focus specifically on eco brutalism and then also like principles of sustainable design, basically what makes a um, what makes a building sustainable, what makes it eco friendly. Right, that's a picture of coffee. I don't know why it's there. I kind of didn't change the picture, but it's okay. Okay, so what is brutalism? Brutalism is basically the use of concrete in architecture. And the reason they use concrete is because it's a very simple, it's a very pliable material. And it's, it's still like, it's like still edgy and clear, even when it's dry. And during the 70s and 90s, 70s through 90s, everyone pretty much disliked this style of architecture because it looks really ugly. Like if you look at that building, the only reason it looks kind of pretty is because of the plants. <laughs> but it rose to popularity in, in like 2010, so 2010. And basically eco-brutalism is just putting plants on this brutalist style of architecture. Okay, principles of sustainable design. Um, basically, you're just trying to optimize the amount, the potential of the land that you're building on. So you're trying to use like all the space. You're not trying to waste anything. You're conserving energy and water. You are careful when you're building and then you're adjusting to the local resources in the environment. So basically, for example, if there's like a lot of natural resources at your site, like sun and wind energy, you can utilize that to increase energy efficiency. Over here is a nice little graphic, basically conserve all your resources and then um, have a durable and maintainable design. So you like, so like when people are in the building, it's still environmentally friendly and you use like eco-friendly materials as well. It's basically about conservation of resources. Types of sustainable design, basically the main two are the choice of building material and landscaping. So basically when addressing sustainability in architecture, you want to look at what you're building it with so it doesn't have a negative impact on the environment. That includes using recycled materials like reclaimed lumber to help reduce energy consumption or like using wood that is renewed after old buildings are like, what's it called? Destru deconstructed, wait, not deconstructed, like taken away and basically just like reusing those materials. And then for the landscaping, you're just trying to make it, make sure your buildings don't go, don't like fight with the landscape around it. So the environment around it, you want to make sure um, you're not like building over any like important plants or like just getting in the way of like the stuff that's already there. You wanna make it all cohesive. So why is architecture important to the environment? First, which is I think is the most important, it can help heal environmental degradation. It can also reduce consumption of non-renewable resources and promote renewable energy resources. And that's kind of what we we're talking about with the with the different types of building material and like conserving water and energy. And then third, it's important to reduce waste. And then fourth, it helps create a healthy and comfortable place for people who are using the building. And here's like a little um, graphic that's really nice. Um, basically, it's good for the environment. So like you're using natural resources in a responsible way. And then second, it's good for the economy. Um, the overall cost is less than a normal building usually. And then third, it's good socially, just because it's good for 
the ecosystem we live in and the environment that is around it. Right. I think this is Emma's part, but is she here? Yeah. I oh, am. Great. Awesome. Okay. Hey. <laughs> you hear stuff going on in the background because there's a kickboxing class and they're playing. Um, can you hear that? No? We're good? No, we can't really hear it. You're good. Sick. Okay, so this, <laughs> this is a, not a real existing building, but it's a prototype, and you can see, like, all those fractured forms stacking on top of each other, giving spaces for um, rooftops or gardens with um, greenery, and so I'm just going to, like, show you guys some examples of what we mean when we talk about eco brutalist architecture. So eco is just, like, you know, I think Mackenzie talked about this, just adding plants to brutalist architecture. So the next one is also a prototype. You can go to the next slide. Yeah, I really like those plants, they're pretty. And then the one after that, this is an example I think of how brutalism can be super beautiful and super interesting. Um, personally, I'm a huge fan of concrete, so I get kind of sad when people say it's ugly because like I guess but also it's it's cute right like look at that little spiral staircase you've got those you've got those shapes that are like inverted you know they're like burp, 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 burp. Mm -hmm. and then oh I just think it's I just think it's neat okay what's and this? So this yeah I love that <laughs> what is that and I can't speak I think it's German, but it's Altier 5 Brunender Strasse House in Bern, huh. Switzerland. And this was constructed in the 70s. Um, the next one, I think, is really funky as well. Ooh. Look at that. You've got all those tubes. You've got those funky shapes. You've got those circular shapes. You've got that cantilever going on. Pretty cool, if you ask me. I don't know what point. <laughs> It's okay. This is Janko Konstantinov Post Office and Telecommunication Center. So a lot of brutalism is associated with Soviet architecture and communist architecture, which I also think is interesting because they were trying to be as cost efficient as possible. So there was a lot of use of concrete. Um, I'm getting weird looks. Okay. It's the fine. next one is pretty famous. It's Habitat 67 in Montreal. I actually saw this one by Moshi Sudi. And... Um, this is interesting, I think, because it was constructed as an aim to provide sustainable um, housing, like housing that was both cheap so that um, there was a housing crisis in Montreal at the time. So families could get affordable housing when they needed it, but also for like aesthetic purposes, but it was hated for a while because it was again, constructed in 67 and people did not like it, but it got famous because of how funky it is and like the cubist vibe, that aesthetic. And now each of those apartments, which are like one or two bedrooms go for about a million dollars and they go on sale occasionally. But like it was originally supposed to be a place that uh, families could rent and have like really affordable um, rent. And so it's interesting how something like this can get gentrified and um, be like perverted from its original purpose. So I'm, Moshi City like ha talked about it and was like, yeah, it's really sad. I wish that they would just like let people live there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next. Like the death of brutalism because a lot of brutalists, um, oh, my boba's here. Okay. Because a lot get? of brutalists, oh, a lot, I, what did I get? What is it? Lavender. I got lavender. Heck yeah. So, yeah. as I was saying, a lot of brutalist buildings are being torn down. <laughs> Dr. Olson said, focus, Emma. <laughs> <sighs> a lot of brutalist architecture is being torn down. Uh, for instance, you can go to the next slide. This is Madison Park High School in Boston. This is still standing. I just thought it was a cool vibe, but people have tried to tear it down because they're like, it's ugly. And oh, look at their aesthetic. Look the at people their aren't ugly. Look at their clothes. Uh, I know, I was about to say. Yeah. Yeah, I think that photo is taken. It's either people decide to dress vintage or it is vintage, you know? Okay, so we well, can go to the next one. This is Tolman Hall um, on the UC Berkeley campus. It was torn down in 2018 and students were always complaining about how ugly it is, which I mean, I kind of agree. This is not my favorite brutalist building, 
Um, so that's an example of a building being torn down. And the next one. Did they like also, put anything outside? Like, did they put anything back or did they just leave it like? What do you mean? There? Like after they tore it down. Like, did they replace it with anything? Yeah. Oh yeah, they rebuilt it. It was actually oh, okay. con- controversial because the rebuilding, the building was not, like it needed more maintenance. And so people mm. were saying that it was less sustainable than just keeping the old ugly building that they already had. I think I touched on that. This is Lester Hall. This is not the right picture. Um, I forgot to replace the photos. But anyways, Wester Hall is also on the UC Berkeley campus. It's the College of Environmental Design, which also is where the architecture takes place. So it's kind of funny. People are always saying, you know, like the architecture building is so ugly, but it's not. It's cool. And people have been trying to take it down forever. Um, but it's still standing. And I hope it stays standing because I think it's pretty neat. Should we look it up? And, yeah, sure. I have a friend who is who took classes there and she was like, yeah. Like that's not that ugly. Like, yeah, okay, it's kind of ugly, but it's not that ugly. It could be worse. Just add some greenery and we're chilling, you know? So yeah, that's what that looks like. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now let's talk about Boston City Hall. Ew, I hate how that emoji turned out on the slide. It was, it's the, it's the purple emoji in iOS, you know? It's red to me. (laughs) We also have Boston City Hall. So in the 50s and early 60s, Boston has plagued by a loss of manufacturing jobs and there was a lot of white flight to the suburbs. Um, I think we talked about that in AP Human Geo, if you were there. But anyways, for a long time, they had the highest poverty tax in the nation and almost no new development. So Boston set an agenda to make the city green or like, just better with these modern buildings made of concrete. And so when Boston City Hall was built in 1968, a lot of critics were put off by the concrete style and they thought it was really cold, which is a common criticism of a lot of brutalist buildings. And especially because it's a government building, um, it was really difficult to remove that criticism from politics. So also I think it's funny that it's like criticized for being cold and alienating because politics, haha. But also, different parties would run and say, you know, like, if I'm elected, I'm going to tear down this ugly building and we're going to have like a nice, um, pretty modern one. But it never actually got torn down because tearing it down would take a lot of money and effort. So now a lot of government officials just have decided to ignore the building. And that's called like active neglect. And it happens a lot with concrete buildings. So they un- they're um, intentionally unrevenated and uncared for because public the public thinks that it's ugly and they think that it would be a waste of time and money to like update it. And so as a result, the building becomes more ugly because it's dirty, it's faded, it's cracked, and therefore it's more hated and then it's more ignored and it becomes more ugly. And so this is a vicious cycle where the public hate of a building just feeds itself. Okay, and then next, Going along with that, as I was saying, deterioration and neglect, because concrete wears, it it holds up its facade pretty well on the outside, but it does require maintenance. It's really hard to tell when a building needs to be repaired because most of it is happening on the inside. So as it says on the screen, um, the rebar, which is um, uh, supported, supporting the concrete with steel bars and stuff, so the rebar can rust and that leads to the concrete fa- fracturing. But by the time the concrete on the outside actually fractures, it's a little bit too late to do anything about it. So as a result, a lot of buildings are going into disuse because we're not taking care of them. But furthermore, tearing them down is really expensive. And then you have the question of replacing it with something that's greener. Um, so instead you can make them, we can make them more eco-friendly by taking care of them, making sure that they're well-maintained and updating their systems so that they can have, you know, efficient lighting and stuff with our modern technology. Cause a lot of these buildings were built in the 60s, 70s, 80s, even maybe before then, depending on where in the world you are. So I think also with any kind of art form, like painting or literature, you know, the more you learn about something, the more you appreciate it. And I, th- I think that this is true. So I'm going to give you guys my defense of concrete and why I love it and why I think it's cool. 
Yeah, UCSC does have similar buildings. Thank you, Dr. Olson. Maybe we can look at some of those buildings in a bit, but yeah. So we usually think of concrete as being really homogenous and boring, but as you can see, it can be super diverse when you consider it closely. So these are a bunch of images of close-ups of the concrete texture of different buildings. And the color and texture can be dictated by the local climate, earth, and rock texture. And concrete can also be an expression of local style and custom. So British concrete usually has a really big texture chunks of rock, whereas Japanese concrete is really fine and smooth. And so you can even tell sometimes where a building was constructed based on the style of concrete and the color that it was used. So on the next slide, this is the same image but instead you can see exactly where all of these buildings are and like what they are. So you can like sort of compare um, what concrete looks like in different parts of the United States and in different parts of the world. I thought that was kind of cool. Okay, so in the next, we're gonna talk about photography because um, concrete shows up really well in photos as you can see from the guy who walked by looked like Bernie Sanders. As you can see from this, um, Prada ad. So concrete, <laughs> concrete provides a neutral background that brings out people's skin tones or the color of their clothing. And so a lot of fashion photographers take photos against concrete. Um, and a lot of places in the internet started to appreciate these concrete buildings and it sort of became like an aesthetic, I guess. So that's one way of saving it. And in the next photo, this is an image of a concrete spiral staircase that I think is really beautiful. It was inspired by those shells on the beach that you see that are like spiraling into themselves. I forgot what they're called, but yeah. Like and also, yes, dragon. Thank you, Dr. Olson. Mm -hmm. um, concrete buildings represent a set of ideas about the state of the world and what the future was imagined to be. And so I think that we should be preserving these buildings because we should remember what people were thinking 50 years ago. And so it's important to note also back in the 1960s, Victorian style buildings were considered really ugly and impossible to repair. And we were tearing down a lot of Victorian buildings, which now we consider to be a tragedy. And we were erecting these giant concrete buildings in their place. But some Victorians were saved and today they're considered treasures and people visit them and take tours and they really love Victorian architecture. So maybe that'll happen, you know, 20, 30 years from now. Um, we're going to regret tearing down all of those old concrete behemoths and be like, why did we ever do that? They were actually really cool. So maybe we should appreciate what we have while it's here and update it to make it more modern and green and fit our everyday. Thank you. Mackenzie, do you want to introduce what we're doing next? Yeah, um, we're just gonna take a group picture because they want one for the yearbook. And so if everyone wants to turn the camera on and I'll like take a screenshot, <laughs> but yeah. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Oh, if you have a plant, you should get your plant so you can put it in the photo. It'll be really cute. <laughs> James is in the same house as me. <laughs> She's literally just across the hall, but it's okay. Okay. Is everyone ready? I'll, I'll do like I a little- I thought Jax was an iguana for some reason, his plant. I think I just really can't see. Yeah, I think that's a little, that's called being blind. <laughs> you should get that checked out. <laughs> Anyways, okay. Three, two, one. Ah. Okay, I did it. I'll put it in my my Gmail. Let's see. And we could take one more if anyone like blinked or something. Hold on. I think it is all good. Okay. okay. Yeah, but it, does anyone have any questions or else we can just like leave a little early. We can look at images of the UCSC buildings. Oh yeah, okay. Let me see if we that. Have time. Oh, this is kind of cool. You want a screen share? Sure. Okay. I don't know how well it will work because I'm on data right now because I'm in a parking lot of a tapioca express. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best place to be. Yeah. 
So, okay, this is the engineering building. That's kind of, that's kind of neat. It's kind of funky. I really like this one, the way that it just sort of like out of the wall. This is a dorm building. What does it say? Can I, I don't know if I want to, I don't know if I want to know or show it <laughs> during the Valley Christian Club meeting. Oh, okay. The little pillars. Oh, oh that's the library. This one is funky. I remember seeing this. It starts with the G. I forgot what it's called though, but it's a really big library. Uh huh. That's, That's UCSD, I think. Is it? Or I don't know. It, I might just be like a random UC. Let's see. Uh huh. Oh, UCSD. Mm -hmm. SC. Huh. That's okay. It's not. Oh my god. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. See, I told you the hippies like. UCSD, the music hub. Nice. That's pretty cool. I am a fan. Maybe the thing is they have all this cool architecture and they don't have an architecture program, so I can't even apply. To Santa Cruz, really? Yeah, oh. I the the only ones that have an architecture program are LA and Berkeley. So I guess I'm not getting into a UC guys. 